Alright, so for those of you that are interested in uh, kind of beefing up your baseboards, uh, this is something you can do. I took several ideas um, from different videos and blogs and things, kind of took what I liked and uh, did my own thing. So um, we just bought this house, it was brand new, we had it built and I felt like for what we paid, sorry for the, the distraction, um, I felt like it should have nicer trim. So uh, it just had the standard uh, four inch baseboards and I wanted something a little more uh, dramatic, I guess. So um, these are one of the few things that I've started doing and I just finished going through the entire house. <clears throat> so uh, I'll show you. You can see that I've got a lot of angles, uh, outside corners, inside corners. This is an outside corner and uh, I start I started here in the bathrooms. Um, I figure if it goes t terribly wrong, it's in the bathroom. So, um, but it, it turned out really good. I'm very happy with it. And so, essentially, what you do is uh, you can see the uh, you still got the the regular baseboard, and this is the quarter round. And then this is just a piece of trim that I got at uh, Home Depot, and. Uh, you place it a predetermined amount of space up above the baseboard uh, standard. You want to do that all the way around and then you paint it and you paint this area in between. So that's just regular sheetrock and it's just been painted um, and it all looks like one piece. So uh, I'm going to go out here real quick and talk about what you need to do in order to make it. All right, so for your tools, uh, you have to have a compound miter saw. Um, I guess you could use a miter box, but uh, you're in for a lot of work. So I'm by no means a skilled carpenter. This is the first time I've really done anything like this. So this is a very small uh, seven and a quarter inch compound miter saw. It's made by Ryobi, it's battery powered, so I can unhook it from the stand and take it with me into the house if I wanted to. If I felt like making a mess uh, and the stand is a lifesaver also um, the stand is separate I think the saw was a hundred bucks and the stand was a hundred bucks if you go right now the stand is uh, on sale for 59 so really good deal but these things extend and so you can lay out uh, your boards real long on both sides and make your cuts um, okay Saw, stand, you need a nail gun. I don't have a compressor anymore since we moved into this house. So uh, I got this. It's uh, battery powered also. You don't need an air compressor. I love this thing. It works amazing. This is an 18 gauge uh, airless nail gun. It fires up to two inch nails. I think I used inch and a quarter. You can control the uh, depth on the back. It's got uh, LED lights built into the front of it. It worked amazing for what I was using it for. Um, let's see. This is an old level. That's the space I used all the way around. And uh, it worked good because I liked that amount of space to be above the baseboard. And it worked out um, equally as well because it's also a level. And so when I put it on there, I was able to see um, if the board was going on level or not. So that worked out. This is an angle finder. Um, I had trouble online finding how to calculate these angles. And I think this was $20 at Home Depot. Um, I'll show you real quick how to calculate your angles because uh, I couldn't find that information really easily. So. We'll turn it on. All right, so it's a zero. So we'll go in here in the kitchen. So here's an outside corner. And you can see I had to make those cuts down there when I did this. All right, so you just open it up and see it starts to calculate the degrees. So 
There's obviously not enough room down here to place it and get the measurement. This is no big deal. Just come up here where there is enough room. One forty one point one. Okay, so call it one forty one. Um, what you want to do is you want to take uh, one forty one and subtract it from one hundred and eighty. It's one hundred and eighty degrees, so that leaves you with a. Uh, well, I, I can't do the math off the top of my head. All right, so this is gonna be my very first video showing how to do any of this stuff. So hopefully I can splice all these together. But when you take that measurement, we got 141, subtract it from 180 and that gives you uh, 39. So you take 39 and divide it by two and that gives you 19.5, right? So you go to whatever saw you're using and uh, see here these are your degrees so you would go and that's an outside corner so whichever side um, of the wood you're cutting you just go and you'd set it to uh, 19 and a half degrees on whichever side you just need to make sure you're cutting either an inside or an outside corner um, very easy so uh, just remember you take your measurement whatever it says um, subtract it from 180 and then divide it by two and uh, that's all you got to do you don't have to worry about shooting the nails into the studs it's not uh, these pieces are not heavy um, just fire them in maybe every foot foot and a half uh, let's see oh so they sell these pieces um, uh, paint grade which is just plain uh, plain wood and then they sell them pre-primed or basically already painted so they're already white um, that color white did not match the white that I've already got for this trim so I did um, it costs an extra 30 cents a foot roughly to pay for the ones that's already painted white but you only got to put one coat of paint on and you get it to match in color it's worth the money. Uh, you'll save a lot of time doing that. So uh, save yourself some, some headache. You're going to save money in the long run because you're not going to use near as much paint. You're going to save a ton of time and uh, a lot of labor on your part. So uh, just buy the ones that are already painted white. I promise you it's worth it. So uh, these are all inside corners. Uh, don't trust that... Uh, you can see how this room has got um, this bank of windows and they're all the same. Don't take one measurement and assume that these are going to be the same because they're not. Um, this house is, like I said, it's new. You can see across the street they're still building. They've got a dumpster there where they're doing construction still. <clears throat> but it's shifting and settling. Um, I've seen upstairs, I think it was off by as much as two degrees. Um, maybe even as much as three in some spots. So measure each angle individually and uh, you'll be glad you did. Nail these things up to the wall. Um, once they're nailed up, go through and just run a bead of caulk across the top and then just wipe it with a wet finger. And uh, if you get any on the paint, no, no big deal. Just take a wet rag and just wipe it off the paint. Um, I didn't go all in depth with wood putty and fill the nail holes and then sand that down and all that. I just took uh, caulk and fill the nail holes in with caulk. If you look close, like right here, see, you can see, um, there's my joint where these two pieces came together. So you got to get real close to see it, but if you want to look for it, um, you can see it. I cut my joints on a 45 degree angle. Like I said, I'm definitely not a carpenter. This was all kind of new to me when I got started, but um, I think it turned out really well for what it is. It was a, a pretty cheap um, upgrade, I think. So uh, there you have it. I think if you have any questions, just post it. 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I have questions about that I couldn't find. Um, my next step will be to uh, maybe do some crown molding. I've got crown that came in here, but they didn't put any in there in the other room. So uh, I'm going to end up doing that. Um, so comment if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to uh, help you with uh, whatever you need. Thanks.